this was probably the most, let's say, eventful dining experience we had on our last trip to the Outer Banks. And that's starting right now. We typically stay in the Kitty Hawk area at OBX, and some nights we like venturing out to check out our neighboring towns, but others we want to stay close by and experience what our town has to offer. The Black Pelican is historic. As the story goes, back in 1874, the building housing the Black Pelican restaurant was constructed as a United States life-saving station. That's really ironic considering the story I'm about to tell you about what happened while we were waiting for a table. As far as the food, the menu sweeps wide, offering the obligatory seafood for a coastal restaurant, but also things like pizza, barbecue, and steaks. Oh boy, the pizza. We're gonna get to all that, but let's talk about what happened while we were waiting. We like getting to restaurants early to put our name in for a table for dinner. So I think at this location, we got there around 5.15 and we're told the wait was gonna be about 45 minutes to an hour and that they'd call us when our table was ready. This time we disabled the spam calling features on our phone because of what we learned at Awful Arthur's and we just waited outside in our car. Now the parking lot at the Black Pelican is pretty vast. In fact, it's multiple lots that seem to surround the building. And there's also a section that you can get to by actually driving under the building. It's kind of cool. We were parked right next to this area, which you have to walk under to get inside the restaurant anyway. Within three minutes of waiting inside of our car, we were hearing sirens and they were getting louder and louder. Before we knew it, our car was actually blocked in by an EMS truck. Now, I'm not really a busybody or a paparazzi, so I didn't actually start filming footage until I was sure that this wasn't a serious event. From what we were hearing when we went back inside and waited for our table and checked out the gift shop, was that an older gentleman who was dining at the Black Pelican was showing signs of heat stroke and exhaustion, so the EMS was called as a precautionary measure. The thing that I felt really bad about was that by this time, the parking lot was getting filled up by a lot of very impatient diners, and it made it difficult for that emergency vehicle to get out of the parking lot. After that, of curiosity, the wait ended up being a little bit over an hour, which given the circumstances is completely understandable. Once we got to the table, I spent a little bit of time pondering whether we were sitting at the same table as that man. But then I quickly shifted gears toward nutrition and for the subject matter of this review. The vibes at the Black Pelican are definitely family oriented. While we were there, it was mainly families who were dining, some of them big families. And that's basically exactly what you'd expect at a popular coastal restaurant in a vacation area. The decor is very much sailing and ship themed, but not really like the pirate ship kind, but kind of leaning toward that territory. I don't know much about ships. There are various sections to the dining room, which speaks to the fact that this place has probably been expanded a few times. The bar is a very big part of the experience here. And although we didn't sit at the bar, I definitely partook in one of the specials there. And that was the Julio Punch. The descriptions of all of their libations, quote unquote, were actually really enticing. Especially that dirty bird, and I gotta take it to the notes, the beach's best pina colada topped with Myers rum. But to me, there was something extra intriguing about that Julio Punch. And that was described as absolute vodka, cruzan coconut rum, blue curacao, and pineapple juice. It'll make you glow like Julio himself. How can you pass that up? And who the hell is Julio? Well, I actually have an answer for that. When I asked, the server actually directed me to a picture that was on the wall, which looked like a really boring old time picture until you zeroed in on the fact that there was a physical photoshopped paste of somebody's face in between some other faces. That's Julio. He's apparently someone who used to work there. And well, his drink was absolutely delicious. And I'm sure if you got too deep in this beverage, you'd probably get yourself into a little bit of trouble. So thanks a lot, Julio, whoever you are. There was so much to talk about about this experience that wasn't food, but let's get back on track. We like trying a few small plates at a place like this, but the menu seemed like it could be straight up food service items paired together and kind of mashed up to make their dishes. Nothing wrong with that, but when we were on vacation, we like getting a little bit more of the local preps. One item that we could all agree on was coconut shrimp, which came with a sweet chili sauce. This definitely confirmed my prejudgment about the prepared foods. These were good and the sauce was good, but that's what it's designed to be. The other thing that we tried was Gulf Stream tuna bites. Fresh locally caught tuna served grilled or blackened with tortilla chips and house-made salsa. This was definitely a lot more up our alley, but the execution was kind of lacking just a little bit on this. It was a little bit difficult to put together, but taking the tuna with the tortilla chip and the salsa, it was a solid bite. Not great, but not bad either. Seasoning was the main thing that I would point to here that needs a little bit of help. The tuna was lightly cooked, maybe a little bit too lightly cooked, and it could have used a minimum of some salt, but possibly something else. We opted for grilled over blackened, so maybe that's the missing link here. The chips were standard and the salsa was fresh, but definitely 
definitely needed a little bit of salt. Noah got something really fun which needs to be highlighted. On the kids menu they have a couple of pizzas and besides the names like Little Cheesers and Pepe La Pizza, the unique thing about them is that they are served on a souvenir black pelican frisbee. How fun is that? As far as the taste of the pizza, not so fun. But I'll get back to that after we talk about my meal. If you're enjoying this, be sure to hit the video with a like and subscribe if you like food. My main course was the Carolina combo. Eastern Carolina pulled pork barbecue and golden fried oysters with grilled fresh corn salsa, southern coleslaw, and butter grilled jalapenos with corn toast. A lot about that description sounded really good. Plus it covers a lot of ground between different types of food and different types of execution. Breaking it down, the corn salsa was definitely forgettable. Again, nothing particularly bad to point to, just unremarkable. Same thing goes for the coleslaw. The toast was also something that was just there and didn't give me a whole lot aside from a medium to use for the pulled pork. For these things, I had pretty low expectations. Being that we were in North Carolina, I would have expected the barbecue to be exceptional. In this case, it was very good, but not particularly outstanding. Overall, it was just very uniform and lightly kissed with a slightly mustardy tasting sauce. Little tang in there. The seasoning as far as the salt was very good on this and I enjoyed it. The fried oysters were pretty darn good. A nicely seasoned little breading on there. Not cooked too crispy, but crispy enough that biting into those is fulfilling. Pretty good. I do have something to say about Noah's pizza on a Frisbee though. I got to taste this thing and let me tell you, not good. Kind of disappointing because they have an entire section of the menu that's pizzas with I think over 14 different types of pizzas that they say comes from a wood fired oven. I'm going to wager to guess and I hope I'm right that the kids pizza on a frisbee is not related to those pizzas at all and I really hope I'm right there. Speaking of pizza, we did make it a point during this trip to have a surprising pizza adventure and I talked about that in this video which you can click and watch right here. 